I had to figure it out. I didn't have a backup plan. I didn't had, we had sold all our stuff. We had moved out. Like we had to figure this stuff out. So, um, I ended up figuring it out really, really well. And I made like 105 grand in four months as a 21 year old college dropout. And then the next year I worked for just eight months and I made almost a quarter of a million dollars. And I was like, hold on a second. Like this is a crazy industry where you can make an incredible living for yourself, but it's inaccessible to 98% of people because nobody's teaching anybody how to do it. Hi, this is Alan Olson and welcome to American Dreams. I'm here today with Becca Spritzer. Becca, welcome to today's show. Thank you, Alan. So Becca, you've had a remarkable career, a phenomenal background. And for the listeners here, uh, can you tell us about you, how you got to where you are today, what, you know, starting out and your your career path here? Yeah, well, this is going to be long story long. Is that okay? <laughs> I always like to say long story short. I'm like, there's really no short way. So, um, I mean, I grew up like a normal Midwest, you know, Midwestern kid and went to college after high school for a couple years. Uh, and my passion at the time when I was that young was was writing. I love to write. I like to blog. I thought maybe I'd get into journalism or be an author or something like that. Um, but I didn't feel super, I, I didn't feel like I was really on a clear path at college. I went home for the summer after my sophomore year just to work, like make some money, go back to school. And I ended up actually getting a recruiting letter from Vector Marketing or Cutco Cutlery. And I got recruited into doing knife sales. And so I sold Cutco knives over the summer and I did so well at it. I mean, I made like 25 or 30 grand as like a 19 year old kid. I was like, I'm not going back to school. I'm good at sales. I'm just going to do sales. So I ended up dropping out of college after my sophomore year, sold Cutco for a couple of years. And then during that process, my uh, my then husband, we're, we're divorced now, but we, should, we both got recruited by a guy who was running a roofing company and he was doing storm restoration roofing. So like hail and wind damage and stuff like that. And uh, he recruited the heck out of us, you know, showed us some really big commission checks. It was like, you guys are doing so well in the Cutco business. Like it'd be a way larger order size. You guys would crush it at roof sales. It'd be like shooting fish in a barrel. So I remember my ex called me one day. I was like driving and he goes, hey, uh, do you think you could sell roofs? And I was like, like, like roofs on houses. And he's like, yeah. And I go, I mean, I guess like if somebody show, like tells me what to do, like, sure, whatever, sales is sales, right? So long story short, we end up selling all of our stuff, moving halfway across the country to the East Coast. And we started doing this like storm chasing roof sales thing. And uh, there was no training. Like you show up and the guy is like, good, you're here. Uh, ride around with Chris for a couple of days and listen to him. And then here's a stack of contracts. Just knock 100 doors a day. It's a numbers game. You'll figure it out. And I was like, what? <laughs> I'm like, I, I'm like 21 year old now, college dropout in a yellow Dodge Neon. <laughs> I've never been on a roof before. I don't know anything about roofing. I don't know anything about insurance. I don't know anything about storm damage. Um, are, are there more directions than this? And there really weren't. Like at the time, there wasn't anybody that was teaching this stuff. So I had to figure it out. I didn't have a backup plan. I did, had, we had sold all our stuff. We had moved out. Like we had to figure this stuff out. So um, I ended up figuring it out really, really well. And I made like 105 grand in four months as a 21 year old college dropout. And then the next year I worked for just eight months and I made almost a quarter of a million dollars. And I was like, hold on a second. Like this is a crazy industry where you can make an incredible living for yourself, but it's inaccessible to 98% of people because nobody's teaching anybody how to do it, right? So I put it like this, okay? So baking a cake is not hard, right? It's like five ingredients. But if the way that you try to learn make baking a cake is watching your grandma who doesn't have a recipe, the recipe's in her head. If you ask her how much of something it is, she's like, I don't know, it's a dash of this and a pinch of this. And it should be about like this consistency. You're it, baking a five ingredient cake literally becomes like college AP chemistry, right? On paper, it's easy bake oven. <laughs> it's three instructions on the back. And the question is lo no longer, do you know chemistry? Are you a talented unicorn of a baker? The question is, do you know how to read? 
right? And so I sat down after a couple of years of doing this and I was like, I know a lot about this roof sales thing now. What if I put it on paper for the industry? So I wrote a book, uh, it's called Diamonds in the Sky. And then I started writing my, my online sales training programs for roofing contractors to recruit people and train them how to close, how to knock doors, how to handle objections and do all that. And uh, that's what I've been doing now since 2014. So it's just teaching the industry everything that I knew. So I, I essentially, I put everything on paper and now I teach people how to sell roofs and I teach people how to teach people how to sell roofs. So, so what are the what are some of the biggest challenges that roofing sales professionals face today? So there's, a, I mean, a lot of things like most of them have zero training whatsoever. That's the biggest problem, right? You're, they're getting hired on by roofing contractor company owners who figured it out without any directions. And now they're just showing up, they're getting shown $25,000 commission checks. And, you know, they're the owner of the company's pointing to their Dodge Ram 45,000 that's in the parking lot. And they're, they're getting like the shock and awe Ben Affleck out of boiler room thing. And then they're not getting any directions. That's the biggest issue. Um, I mean, honestly, that's really it. They're just not getting the recipe. The reality is in this particular industry, like storm restoration sales, and I'm not even talking about retail roof sales training right now. In storm restoration, we are practically giving roofs away to people who already need them. Like a storm hit their house, their insurance company is going to pay for it. They just have to pay their deductible most of the time. Like it doesn't get much easier than that. But again, it's the same way that cake is easy, right? It feels like rocket science if it's not on paper. But I mean, above and beyond that, there are some other challenges like the industry is changing a little bit right now where a lot of these homeowner policies are shifting from what's called replacement cost value or RCV into actual cash value or ACV. And essentially what that means is the insurance companies are going to pay a prorated amount on the roof. Um, so instead of getting a $20,000 roof for a $1,000 deductible, they might be getting the roof might cost 20 grand to replace, but the insurance company is only going to pay for 50% of it because the roof's 15 years old or, or whatever. So those are some challenges too. But I mean, competition, people started figuring out there's kind of like a gold rush in storm restoration roof sales because uh, people started realizing that you could make what we call drug dealer money <laughs> selling roofs. Uh, so there's a lot of different stuff, but what would you like to focus on? I mean, we could take a deep dive in any of that, Alan. Well, the the industry that you're in, you know, with with uh, basically when a disaster hits, yeah, uh, and you're doing sales, you know, you're dealing with clients during a very stressful time in their life. How do you coach your clients to build trust with home, homeowners? Because I imagine that there's a lot of people coming into the neighborhoods and they're trying to decide, well, who do I want to work with here? Right. Absolutely. So yeah, I mean, and that's going to be varying in degrees too, right? Like in a hurricane situation where somebody has lost everything, that's going to be a way more emotional experience than somebody who maybe they had some dents on the top of their Subaru out in the driveway, but they didn't, you know, there's not water pouring in through their house or anything like that. Those are going to be different like degrees, right? But as a, as a roof sales rep, I mean, it's really, first of all, just being really authentic with people, calling a spade a spade. Like, I have no problem telling somebody if they don't have enough damage not to worry about it. Um, like, hey, like, I might see a couple dings up there, but, you know, I don't really see enough that would warrant you filing an insurance claim or doing anything like that. The biggest thing is going to be educating and empowering consumers because a lot of them don't even know who, like, they don't even know who their insurance company is until you sit, like, they forgot or they don't even know what their deductible is. They don't understand the process. Um, so really positioning yourself as the expert who's there as an educator and an advisor first and a salesman second. And by the way, it's okay to say that. Like, I always teach people, you don't need to go in and like pretend you're not a salesman until the very end when all of a sudden you're asking for the sale, right? Like tell them up front, like, hey, look, I'm not here to try to sell you a roof. The first thing I'm here to do is see if you even have damage or not. And if you don't, like, I'm not going to tell you that you have damage if, if you don't, because that's a huge waste of my time. I'm just doing insurance claims, right? So then they understand like, okay, this person is not just trying to come up, scare me. They're, we're not going to use scare tactics. We're not going to try to convince them that their roof is going to cave in on top of their head if they don't do something right now. You know what I mean? So I think it's just about being honest, authentic, and educational. 
So what trends do you see uh, shaping the future of the roofing sales, particularly when it comes to technology and customer expectations? Yeah. So actually, as far as technology, there's some really cool stuff out there right now. There's some companies called, uh, Ro- everybody pronounces it Roof R, but it's not. It's Roofer. It's R-O-O-F-R. Roof Link. That's another one. Roofle. There's all these different like applications now where uh, customers can actually literally like scan a QR code and instantly build a quote for their roof. That's going to be pretty accurate, probably within 10 or 15 percent of, of what it will actually cost. That allows them also to raise their hand as an interested buyer, right? Because they're just going on, they're offering a little bit of information. Uh, so that's a really cool thing that people are allowed to do now, like, or they're able to do. Consumers are actually able to, instead of call a bunch of roofing contractors to come out with a carbon copy contract and like put together a bid on paper, they're able to actually go online and do it themselves, which is really cool. Um, but as far as like trends, I, I see... You know, my friend Jen Silver, she actually was way ahead of her time, but she was doing a a conference for a while called One Industry, One Model. And basically, like, she saw way far further ahead than most of us did, I think, about how the insurance companies are changing. Insurance companies are businesses, and businesses are in business to do what? Make money. And how insurance companies make money to fight. Bill Burr has a really funny comedy bit on this, but uh, the way that insurance companies make more money is, they pay out less, right? They, they want to collect as many premiums as possible, but pay out as little as humanly possible. And so what they've been doing now that we've had this gold rush in the insurance restoration roof sales business is they've started changing procedures. They're implementing things like percentage deductibles or specific like hail deductibles now, kind of like they've had in Florida for decades. They have hurricane deductibles, right? And that might be two to 10% of the value of the home, that's pretty significant, right? Like if you're talking about a 2% deductible on a $600,000 home, that's a lot different than paying a thousand bucks flat, right? Um, And then the other thing that they're doing it that I mentioned earlier, they're changing a lot of these policies into ACV. And so what that means for roof sales, it's funny because people in the industry, they kind of treat it like the sky is falling, like chicken little. They're like, oh my God, nobody's ever going to be able to buy roofs. And I'm like, you guys, how do you think like other contractors that do kitchen remodels sell an $80,000 kitchen remodel or a $40,000 deck or a $50,000 swimming pool? How do you think people, people buy $65,000 cars, right? It's, so it's, it's a shift into actually making it regular sales where they're going to have to do more bidding, cash jobs, uh, financing, stuff like that. So that's a huge trend that's happening right now in, in our industry. And people just need to learn that are you looking at it like the cup, the glass is half empty or half full? Because if I walked up to buy a new Jeep today and the guy said, your insurance company's going to pay for half of it, I'm going to be stoked, <laughs> right? Even if it's not 98% of it, like it would have been with an RCV policy, like that's still awesome. So that's something that I'm working on training the industry about right now. So Becca, in with the people that you work with, uh, Describe your process of the uh, person calls you up, say, hey, just, you know, tell me what I need to do to make $100,000 in the next four months. I mean, is there a, a certification that you run through? Is it, is it with the class that you bring together? You know, what is, what is the process for the, pe- the type of people that you work with? Yeah. So to sell roofs, you don't need any type of certification. You don't need any license. That's what's so cool about it. I mean, the opportunity is is accessible to anybody with or without an education. I'm probably one of the most uneducated people out of the group of, of peers that I'm in, right? Like I never got a degree, you know, I dropped out of school. So the process is they essentially need to learn three main things. They need to understand how to knock doors, like how to generate leads. So because that's not that's that's kind of a scary thing, right? Like knocking doors is not a piece of cake. It sucks. People can be rude. There's barking dogs. It's hot, right? Um, people don't generally love it when you knock on their door. So learning to get good at canvassing and referrals and stuff like that is is critical. The second thing is going to be learning the insurance process, right? And so they need to understand what value it is that they're bringing to the table. Why are you necessary in somebody's insurance claim? Well, would you go to court without a lawyer? 
No. Why? Because you don't know the ins and outs of everything like a professional does, right? So that's what your value is in the process. So helping customers to be able to educate them on how insurance works, how hail damage works, like how all this process is going to work, that's critical. And then the last piece is going to be closing, right? So that's going to be the value proposition. What are you asking them to do in exchange for you coming in and doing an inspection on their house, identifying hail damage, documenting it, meeting with their insurance company, getting a roof bought? Well, in exchange, I'm asking Mrs. Jones that if I get this approved, all I ask is that you allow my company to do the work, right? Does that sound fair? So that's going to also include like handling typical objections. You know, if somebody says, can't you just give me a bid? Will you eat my deductible? Do, I think I'm just going to wait till the next storm. Oh, my brother-in-law is a roofer. I mean, there's the, all the different objections that somebody would learn, but it's a simple sales process. It's not that complicated. Um, they just need to learn what to say. I mean, it's literally what to do and what to say, and that's it. Anybody can do it. So what are some of the common mistakes that roofing sales professionals make and what strategies you teach to help them avoid it? So some of the mistakes, like the first one that comes to, to mind is cherry picking. Um, they'll go out in neighborhoods and they'll spend so much time driving. <laughs> they, they feel like they're working a ton, but they're driving around. They're trying to look for the biggest roofs. They're trying to guess where there's damage. I never did that. I parked myself in a neighborhood and I worked that neighborhood. I knocked every door until I talked to every single homeowner on that block um, or in that neighborhood because now you're just, because the thing is like, imagine that a neighbor get hit, neighborhood gets hit by hail, right? If I go in there and there's damage, what are the odds that most of the houses there have damage? Pretty good. <laughs> So I'm not going to just look for the biggest one. I'm going to stay in there because as soon as I get one person to let me do an inspection, I confirm there's damage, I stick a sign in their yard. And then I go next door. Hey, I'm so sorry to bother you, but you, you must know Jim and, and Beth next door. Um, I just got off the roof. They have quite a bit of damage from that storm that we had a couple of weeks ago. I hear some pictures, picture, picture, picture. You guys are just right next door. I just stopped by because I'm going to do a free inspection for you. Now you do that all the way down the street and you're just taking over an entire neighborhood. Like you can get a hundred houses, right? And the commission in roof sales, I mean, on a typical residential house, you're probably going to be making two grand, 2,500. So if you want to make a hundred grand, you only have to sell like 40 roofs, maybe, maybe even less than that. Um, so other mistakes, uh, fear mongering. Some people think that if they don't convince the homeowner that without their help, that they're never good. Their roof is going to cave in or something like that. Like that doesn't work. Like just be honest, call a spade a spade. Um, and then I would say just not even having a process in general. Like most people are truly flying by the seat of their pants. It's the, you're in the kitchen and you kind of know that there's eggs and flour and sugar and stuff, but they're never figured out. They're just, oh, I'm doing this, I'm mixing this stuff together. Maybe this works next time. I don't know. So those are like the main things I see with roof sales reps. I will tell you though, Alan, like most of the time I'm using, I'm working with the business owners, not the sales reps themselves. I'm teaching the business owners how to hire people and how to train their sales reps. If you could give one piece of advice to your younger self when starting out in roofing sales, what would it be? Gosh, what would I have told myself? Man, I don't, I honestly don't really know how to handle that because I think I handled it. This is going to sound like arrogant to say, but I really handled it to the best of my ability. I don't know if I would actually have changed anything. Um, I went into it with the attitude that if anybody can do this, then I can too. Like you don't need to be specially talented or anything like that. Um, and I really brought just like my best possible attitude and work ethic to it. Failure was not an option. I just got up every single day. I did everything that I knew that I needed to do. Um, I don't know if I would have changed it. That, that's my honest answer. I don't think I would have changed anything about how I approached it. I gave it my all and uh, I, I didn't wait for somebody to give me permission. I didn't sit there and say, well, I would be able to do this if somebody showed me how. I just went in and figured it out. Um, that's the best answer I've got for you on that one. Well, that's great advice and just stay committed and stay with the program then. So it. Rebecca, it's absolutely been a pleasure to have you with us today here on American Dreams. If a person wants to reach out to you, how do they find you? Uh, well, if they directly want to chat with me, my email is Becca, B-E-C-C-A at RoofSalesMastery.com. That's RoofSalesMastery.com. 
Um, or they can follow me on Instagram, uh, Becca underscore Switzer, uh, or they could do at Roof Sells Mastery. And then I have another Instagram for my spiritual stuff, which is nirvana dot by dot nature. <laughs> so that's a different part of my personality. <laughs> Well, it's been an absolute pleasure having you with us today. Absolutely. Thank you, Alan. I appreciated the uh, conversation. Thanks for having me on.